Good afternoon as it is here in Colorado and welcome to the final of round six of the IFSC Boulder World Cups 2016. I'm Charlie Bosco, alongside me is Kyra Condi and we are coming to you live from Vail. Home to 5,300 people and sitting at 8,150 feet or 2,500 meters for Europeans, Vail is famous for its skiing, hiking, mountain biking and rafting. For one weekend per year however the GoPro Mountain Games comes to town and takes over the entire village. Of course, our interest lies in the climbing. And Kyrie, you were involved today in the semi-finals. Problems look really physical. Tell us all about it. Yeah, they were very hard. So uh, along with the altitude and the heat that was <laughs> like followed this morning, it was quite a difficult round. Um, no boulder was easy to get to the top two, and they seemed to get harder as you got <laughs> higher. And so um, it's going to be a interesting final round now that we got better weather and but the competitors are tired so it's worth pointing out actually we just had a big downpour i think it stopped raining and it's quite cold now that should make it slightly easier because we didn't get a lot of tops in the qualifiers or the semis yeah um conditions are huge in rock climbing as a lot of people know um but the um uh, sorry, <laughs> the conditions are huge in rock climbing, and as soon as it gets a little bit colder, and now we have a breeze, as uh, we can see the tents moving around us, but um, that'll really help as far as like greasiness on the holds, and like there's some really small holds on the wall, and that'll really help. We have a bit like the qualifiers and the semis. We have got a pretty physical set of boulders for the climbers today. As it we can see, the crowd beginning to build up. The live MC doing a, a great job. It's kept it going all day yesterday and through the rain. Thankfully, seems to have stopped raining just in time. Not too far off. We can just see the climbers to the left of the wall there. About to be introduced to the crowd. And just to quickly run you through who our finalists will be in the men's event. We have Sean McCall, Rustam Gelmanov, Yoshiyuki Gata, Tomoe Narasaki, Kokoro Fuji, and Alexei Rubsov. And in the women's competition, they're coming out now. Shauna Coxie, Melissa Lenev, Megan Mascarenas, Anna Storm, Alex Puccio, and Miho Nanaka. There's Megan, we don't see her in every World Cup. But she's uh, always a contender when she does take part. Kyrie, you must know um, Megan pretty well. Yeah, I've competed against Megan for many years, since we were probably like 10. <laughs> and uh, she's always been a super strong competitor, even when we were that young. Uh, I know like going into nationals, I was like, oh, Megan's going to be against me here right now. Um, but she's impressive to watch. She just really knows how to rock climb and move her body. and it's. It's impressive. And there's Alex Pucci. You probably just saw her sprinting across the stage. She's just had a year out for injury. Delighted to be back. Yeah, and she's looking stronger than ever. She's looking super strong. And there's Miho Nanaka. Okay, and here come the men. Here's Sean McCall. Third last time out in Innsbruck. After... Until then, a fairly unremarkable season by his high standards. Here's Rustam Gelmanov. Already won the World Cup this year. Yoshiyuki Ogata, his first final. One of three Japanese men in today's final. Here's another one, Tomo Narasaki. Currently leading in the overall standings, but only nine points ahead of Kokoro Fuji. Here he is. No man can claim the overall Boulder World Cup title today. And 
here's Alexei Rubsov. So two Russians, three Japanese, and one Canadian in the men's final. The Japanese team is pretty amazing this year. They've been extraordinary. No one saw them coming. No. And then they've just... Taken it by swarm, yeah. Taken it by storm, they have. <laughs> men's event's been interesting this year. No one's really, really bossed it. No one climber, but the Japanese have been a constant feature. Yeah, most definitely. I've, I, I thought that it was interesting as well how the men's field seems to have been like a different field every final through all the World Cups. It does. We're only just now, six events in, beginning to get something of a pattern. But even then... Even the women's final, too. We have a couple regulars, but then it's always like three other people who are different, I feel like. It's been a wide open year, I guess, with the possible exception of Shauna Coxey. Oh, who's of course, yeah. Been storming away, but yeah, absolutely. Great to see Alex Puccio back as well. You see the women checking out Boulder One. You probably see from the fact that their hair's blowing around. There is quite a bit of wind here. Much cooler than it was earlier. Oh, and I'm sure the competitors are loving that. <laughs> it was pretty hot earlier. How did you find the conditions? Um, I didn't notice it too much on the first couple boulders, but by the end, uh, I don't know if anybody was watching, but the fourth boulder, at least for the women, had like some slopers on it, and they felt, for lack of a better word, swarmy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you just were like sliding off of them, but yeah. which is not exactly what you want. But uh, with these types of conditions, with this wind, I think this first boulder will, will definitely see people get to the top of it. So remember, the climbers have a two-minute inspection period per boulder. They do it en masse. It's always interesting. Are you one of the people that likes to share beat it, or do you stand at the back quietly? Uh, it depends on who else is in the final, I guess, but I usually talk it through with somebody. If I spy something that I think is really key, I might keep it to myself, but I'm also a little bit hyperactive, so I tend to just share it right away and not realize it. <laughs> um, so you'd like to be quiet and reserved, but you, you don't always manage it. Exactly. <laughs> you get excited that you see a move, and it's like, oh, that's what you can do. Uh, I think probably some of these more seasoned or veteran uh, World Cup climbers tend to keep some beta that they see to themselves, but also want to talk some things through. We can see there, Alexei Rubsov on the right of your screen. Just at the bottom of our camera there, staying out of the discussion. And I didn't hear a buzzer, but I think they've moved on. The judges have moved on along. Yeah, women, uh, men's one that you saw there on the left that they've just been inspecting. It's a relatively simple boulder, but the final move to the top is quite difficult. Though it's easy to read, there's no real trick to it. it doesn't, it's still a hard move. Yeah. Men's two has all sorts, crimps, jumps, balance. This would be a really interesting boulder. These 360 volumes just make the wall look crazy. <laughs> Those are the uh, large like semicircles that are up there. We can see some on the women's boulder as well, just above all the competitors. Shauna Cox, you can see there, just trying out the lower holds. Just made the final today. If you watch the semi finals, it was yet another example of her performing under pressure. Had two attempts to get the fourth boulder. She did it on the second attempt. Whether she was aware of how much pressure she was under, I don't know. From what I've heard, during the uh, finals, everyone kind of knows how they have to do, but not so much during the semifinals. Okay. It can be really difficult. It's, it's funny, we get different climbers co-commentating. Obviously, we socialize with them and chat to them. And but some of them say, oh, yeah, I knew I needed three attempts. And some of them don't even have a clue what they need. I'm definitely one of the people who try and keep myself somewhat clueless, yeah. just because I don't like a ton of pressure, like enough pressure to try and do well. but not so much of like, oh god, I have to do this on my second try. In terms of sports psychology and process and all the sports buzzwords, it does make more sense just to think about the next five minutes, the next boulder. I get the impression there's a few climbers that know exactly what the score is and what they need. But I know what you mean, that does put extra pressure on you. Definitely, and I know a lot of the competitors, and myself included, usually uh, like to listen to music in the back so you can like kind of block out the crowd and hear how people are doing. So maybe they try also try and keep themselves clueless in that way. 
Now, men's three. This is a really unusual boulder. One of the root setters who was chatting to earlier described it as off-width bouldering. You go from the starting holds that we can see Alexi trying out there. You can't quite see it from this angle, but there's another big blue volume. And you go into an iron cross, a gymnastic iron cross, and then you move left and you thrutch up a corner. It's, it's like a trad climb condensed into five meters. It's a cool route. Yeah, I think we're going to see some competitors wrestling with that boulder. It'll be a really fun one to watch, actually. It's not going to be uh, necessarily very pretty. <laughs> it's going to be a fight. We see them there, the two, vol uh, two volumes, straight above the climbers. That's Kokoro. So, yeah, we, saw <laughs> we just saw a glimpse of Kokoro Fuji miming the, the Iron Cross move. He's obviously figured out what you need to do. I think Sean McCall has from what he's saying. Yeah, I don't think there's really any actual holds on that climb other than the start and finish. There's just volumes. <laughs> now, I'm interested in the politics of this. Sean McCall's Canadian. Do you think the crowd will cheer for him? I think, I think yes. Uh, <laughs> a lot of the people who come to this event, too, are somewhat regulars to it, and Sean McCall is a familiar face. You think he'll have the support of the crowd for this final? Yeah, definitely. But really, anyone who's doing well, the crowd likes. So. <laughs> Absolutely. You can see there, the crowd just beginning to build up. We actually had a bigger crowd about 40 minutes ago, but the downpours sent a few people scurrying away. I'm sure once they finish their coffees or beers, they'll be back, and, and no doubt the field will be full by the time we get to the end of the event. Women's three, balancey start this one. We see Melissa Lenev having a look at it. Remember, the, the climbers aren't allowed to, to pull on. They're not allowed to try the first moves. But they can't touch any of the start holds. Moved along. Now onto the fourth boulder. This men's one is hard. We're not going to see a lot of tops on this boulder. Uh, this flat hold is what the uh, that men's boulder is made up of, and those can get really condition dependent. So it's nice that it's a little cooler now. I think we might see a few more tops than we would have done if this was at lunchtime. Most definitely. Again, this should be quite an entertaining boulder to watch. There's uh, a knee bar quite low down that the root setters think is the best way of doing it. As we see Miho Nanaka and Anna Stor just walks into the shop. Check out women's four. I would describe the women's uh, fourth boulder as like burly. <laughs> would you agree? <laughs> I would, yeah. This, again, it's what the root setters think isn't always how it works out, but they think the best way of getting to the bonus is to go feet first. Mm. Uh, and when you see where the bonus is and the angle of the terrain around it, you'll understand it's pretty physical. There it is. So you're going to go feet first to that. It's, it's a physical bit of climbing. It'd be interesting to see if that's how the girls try it. Sean McCall leading discussions on men's four. As you said, that uh, fourth bullet for the women has a feet first move. The two US girls might have a bit of an advantage because we had a problem a lot like that in the finals at our nationals. How long ago was that? It was in January, but it was the last like, big bouldering comp okay. in the US. So. Do you find that when you've been competing recently, you've, as well as being stronger and in the groove, as people say. You're also more imaginative in the way you do moves just because you've seen more boulders recently? Oh, I think I think definitely. Like, you pay attention to a lot more things, like maybe notice like, like a sidewall that's not taped off or things like that. Uh, it does make a difference then to how you read boulders if you're just doing a lot of comps, because comps are normally, the style is quite different. Oh yeah, and if you notice, you know, it's all, almost always the same people in the finals, maybe not so much this year, but other years, and that's because they get so much practice with it, and they, they have this like season where there's a comp every other weekend, and I think they just get better and better throughout the season, most usually. So the climbers will be out very shortly, just to run you through who the start list will be. In the men's event, we have Sean McCall, Rustam Gelmanov, Yoshiyuki Ogata, Tomoa Narasaki, Kokoro Fuji, and Alexei Rubsov. Out of those names, I'm going to put you on the spot. Who do you think is going to win today in the men's event? Oh, no. Uh, that is a hard one. I think that, um, personally, I really like watching Rustam Gelmanov. I think he's an incredible 
incredibly impressive climber, super, super strong, good body control, and these boulders seem like they could possibly have that help, <laughs> I guess. And so I could, I'll put my money on him for now. And in the, um, in the women's competition, if Shauna Coxie finishes on the podium, she's gonna win the overall event. Do you think she will manage that today? I think she's put up a extremely impressive performance so far this circuit, and it's very likely that she'll do it again. You back here for the win? Uh, it'd be awesome to see her win again. I think it would also be great to see another American on the podium too. We've got two, and um, Megan was last year's winner, so you never know. Well, Alice Puccio back from her year-long injury. There we see the crowd beginning to fill up. Um, back from her year-long injury, looked supreme in qualifiers and semi-finals. Yeah, I think that injury did nothing but motivate her to get even stronger than she was, and she was looking really fit last year. Yep, qualified second in the semi-finals earlier today. I think, yeah, if I had, if I had ten dollars and I was a betting man, I might be putting it on Alex Puccio. I've got a feeling in front of her home crowd. It'd be great to see her win in front of her home crowd for sure. She's been putting a lot of work into it, so. It's always a good party. It seems like every night here in Vail, but I think if Alex Puccio wins, it'll be doubly good. Definitely. So, a couple of minutes to go. Who else uh, do you think in the men's final is going to challenge? Do you think Tomoa, Kokoro? I think the Japanese team has been looking extremely strong and it would be unlikely to not see any of them podium. <laughs> I, I mean, even Yoshiyuki, first final, but qualified fourth. Seeing that, he'll be third out. I was actually climbing in Boulder when uh, the Japanese team was practicing at the same gym, and my mouth was to the floor half the time <laughs> just watching the men do some of these boulders, making them look just easy. There we see the women's. So Japan making up four of the 12 finalists across both events, Miho and Naka there with Sora. Remember that the climbers will come out in reverse order of how they qualified from the semi-final. So if you qualified first in the semi-final, you are last out in the final. There's a crowd getting revved up. Last year at this event too, Anna Store pulled out mid-final because she got a finger injury on one of the boulders. This is her ninth trip to Vail, Anna Store, and her ninth final. I saw that. That's incredibly impressive. She's one of the most consistent competitors I think the World Cup circuit has ever seen. Anna Store, she'll be out fourth, qualified third. Great to have her in the finals. see right at the back of your shot there people streaming in space going to become an issue soon I don't believe it's supposed to rain anymore tonight so is that the forecast apparently <laughs> <laughs> you never know with weather but hopefully that's the case one thing that's been predictable about the weather here is that you can't predict it it's been absolutely extraordinary how fast it can change yeah, mountains tend to do that I guess <laughs> Where I'm from, I don't really have those, but. <laughs> here are the first climbers. Sean McCall looks absolutely delighted to be here. As well, he might. Second final this year. Sean Coxie. As ever, looks completely relaxed. And we're underway. You can see Shauna has a towel. Uh, most likely it's either wet back behind ISO or it's to get the chalk off of her feet before she gets back on the climb. Always prepared. So women's one, you go up left, that powerful shoulder move that Shauna's just doing now. Now one way the root setters think of doing this, this section that Shauna's on, to use your knees where Sean is currently putting her right foot. You can actually get a bit of purchase off a knee, but she doesn't need it. Now she's going up for 
two green bolt-on holds, which will come back into the shot in a second. Can crimp them, but slightly better as a pinch. Is this going to be a flash of the first boulder from Sean O'Coxey? It's looking like it. Yes. It is. Maybe she's feeling the pressure a bit more than we thought from that expression on her face then. As we watch Sean McCall. We haven't seen him climb yet. I assume this is his first attempt. Are we going to see two flashes? The hold his left hand is on is like a, it has a tiny little thing on it for about one finger, about the size of one finger. <laughs> so if you can imagine a one fingered crimp, I would say that's about what it is. No, you probably heard that from the crowd. I thought Sean had got that. You can also see that they black taped off the right side of that wall, and that means that the competitors can't use that at all. And even on that swing, if you could just like touch a foot over there, it would really help, but you're not allowed. Well, we saw that in the last event in Innsbruck, Anna Stur. She dinoed for the last hold and her feet swung out, touched the wall behind her, and the judges called her down. So those of you who watch that will be familiar with what Sean McCall's up against. As I say, I think that was his second attempt actually that we saw. This is attempt number three. That's a risky black tape spot too. On the left you mean? Yeah. Yeah, easy to touch outside. So no problem up to the bonus. Just off vertical this wall. As I said when the climbers were inspecting the boulders, this one is, is relatively simple to read. I mean, Sean knows what he needs to do, get that right foot up and stand on it, but knowing what to do and being able to do it are two very different things. Uh, these holds are also from the company Soil, and they're a very American hold company, and so I bet a lot of the Europeans don't really get the chance to climb on these a lot, which will be, I don't know, something interesting to see. It certainly adds another element to it, but you thought Sean would be fairly used to him, but he's struggling with that top one. Yeah, you mentioned earlier that that last move was going to be harder than it looks. I think it might be something where you have to get a left hand and a right hand on either side almost and like meat hook or, you know, like kind of wrap each side of it. Yeah. But I can't quite tell how good that hold is. Obviously not great. <laughs> no. This is not an easy move here, but Sean's see the strength in that left shoulder, no trouble. And there's no feet for that press. So his time's up, but because he's already off the ground, Sean can continue with his attempt. So, you probably hear the crowd getting behind him now. This will be his last attempt, just needs to take his time, he's really precise. Let's see, will he... <laughs> mid boulder, I like it. Will it work? No! At least you can see the funny side of it. Takes one more look at it. Not quite sure that was. I think he was just saying that he might have, uh, he should have just went up and tried to touch the bottom with both fingers, which I think would still be really difficult to balance, but it might work. Could work. But that's, I think, the idea he just had. So, Melissa out onto women's one. Just to confirm, Shauna Coxie flashed women's boulder one. Dream start to this final. Remember, if Shauna Coxie finishes on the podium today, she wins the overall title for 2016. She's off to a good start. She couldn't get off to a better start. So here's Melissa. It's a powerful move up this with the left hand. Big shoulder move. No problem for Melissa. She put her foot on the farther uh, start hold than Shauna did, which I think would maybe be a little bit easier to get it up to. It's further as far as flexibility, but she looked like she had an easier time getting it up there than Shauna did. It's still first attempt, Melissa. 
still on for the flash. As I say, going up these two bolt holds. You can crimp them, you can also pinch them. Pinching is said to be slightly easier. As you see, she's pinching, you don't see that thumb. Shauna only just held that oh. hold, and Melissa doesn't quite manage it. Yeah, the setters look like they blocked that off, so it's not too easy of a finish. Let's have a look at Rustam. He's on the top of the slab. No. Not as close as Sean. Seems to almost back out of that just before he went. Yeah, he went just left hand, which is, I don't think is the way. That hold looks a little bit too bad to grab just one handed. But then again, these, these guys are quite strong. <laughs> As the brushes, nice community feel to this event in Vale. All the, a lot of the brushes and volunteers are teenagers. And great soon getting involved with the uh, the World Cup. Yeah, I recognize uh, I recognize a lot of them as our uh, youth competitors from our nationals. This is Melissa, I think, about to pull on again to women's one. I feel like here in Vail we see a little bit less attempts just because of the altitude. You really get tired really quick. We mentioned the altitude earlier, yeah. Do you think it affects you on your individual attempts or is it more after your attempts when you're recovering and it just takes that bit longer? I think it's both. Uh, I notice, at least for me, I no amount of power endurance can prepare you to <laughs> really compete in Vail if you're from anywhere that's lower than 5,000 feet. <laughs> So Melissa, no problem with the powerful shoulder move. No problem with the heel hook. Just needs to free that right hand, and she does so. As I say, Shauna just about held on to the top hold. Melissa didn't quite, she does this time. And that is an even happier than normal Melissa Lenev. Rustam. Still not getting on with this slab, so I think this could be a recurring theme for the men that they'll all, well, most of them should get to the bonus relatively easily. And there's probably only one more attempt left for Rustam with only 35 seconds. I thought so. I'm fascinated to know what Melissa's got in that white bag. She's only, only out of isolation for four minutes, she's got an enormous bag of stuff. You know, Shauna brought one out too, I noticed. Yeah, I know, I'm, I'm interested sure. what they've all got. <laughs> so this will be Rustam's last attempt. Time up. You can carry on though. Not going for the Sean McCall option of pumping the crowd up midway through. So Sean, Sean thought possibly with hindsight he should have pushed the underneath of that hold. Rustam didn't try it though. I'm going to guess that's not what the road setters intended, but that it is probable, if not possible. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Megan Mascarenas out onto women's one. Just off to the left of you, just left off your screen is Yoshiyuki Ogata. It's his first final. Megan, she's only taken part in seven World Cups, but she's made the final in five of them. And we're going to see her doing a full season next year. That is something to look forward to. So at this stage, both men's and women's boulder one following a similar pattern that the climbers aren't struggling too much to get to the bonus. I don't think we're going to see Megan having any trouble with this heel hook move. There seemed to be one of her go-to things, and she's really good at them. Now's her chance to preview right. 
Yes, absolutely right. Up to the crimp pinch. Bolt on hold. Seems looking think, pretty promising. I think we're going to see a more static attempt than what Shauna did, more like Melissa. Megan's more of a static climber. Megan Mascarenas, is so three women out onto Boulder One. Three women have topped it. Interesting because until now, we haven't had many tops in the qualifiers or the semi finals, but probably worth remembering these boulders were set in the blistering heat earlier this week, and it's now quite cool. Possibly got a, a grade easier. Who knows? We shall see as the competition progresses, but we certainly haven't seen this so far this weekend. Lots of tops on any boulders. I think too with finals boulder, boulders you get a lot more tops just either because of adrenaline and we like to have a show you know you want people <laughs> you want people topping yeah yeah the, the boulders in the final do tend to be possibly slightly easier is that fair to say I would the say semis? if they're necessarily oh, easier but um, they're definitely less low percentage I think so that it's, it's more likely that they'll be tops, yeah. but they're just as hard. <laughs> I see what you mean. Let's have a look at Yoshiyuki. We haven't seen much of him. So he's going with the right hand there. Sean McCall went with the left. Right hand from Yoshiyuki. So again, up to the bonus without too much trouble. thinking about going for it from there, no. I need that right foot. Come on, Yoshi. Crowd getting behind him. I think that was the closest one we've seen yet. I think it was the closest one, yeah. He didn't look quite as solid as uh, Sean up to that final move, but yeah, certainly the closest anyone's come to sticky, I think. Yashiyuki just wants a bit more cleaning done. Top hold. It's first final Yoshiyuki, but he... I'm pretty sure he's out of time there. Yoshiyuki Ogata! Judges haven't called him down. I suspect we're having an issue with our timing screen in that case. So, Yosh it won't matter either way. That was the second time I saw his hand slip off that left hand. And like I was saying, it's just like there's only enough room on it for like maybe <laughs> one finger. A one pad hole. Yeah. You can just see to the left of the wall there, Tomoe Narasaki currently leading the men's overall competition and Anna Stur, the green vest, there she is. Four-time winner of the overall competition. Getting a good reception here in Vail, Anna. Very popular everywhere she goes, but as I say, she's been in this event nine times. She's been to the final nine times. Not bad consistency. Pulls straight onto women's one. Almost looked like she rushed that a little bit. Mm. I guess even super experienced climbers like Anna Stor get an adrenaline rush when they run out. She looks like she's just calming herself down now. Yeah, I've often been wondering when uh, Anna's going to decide to retire from the World Cup circuit. She's had such a successful season, every season almost, and so it'll be interesting when she decides that it's it's done. But with a competitor like that, it's, it's hard to stop, I think. Well, she's still relatively consistently making finals. This is the second one in a row. She loves competing. Crowd love watching her, as you can probably hear. Is she going to lunge to the top? Oh. Yes, doesn't quite make it stick. 
Seems like the most secure way of doing that is to do it statically. Yeah, it looked like her right hand like popped off that as well. So I guess maybe it is a little hotter than it feels to the spectators. So Hisamura Narasaki got a nine point lead in the overall standings. Straight up to the bonus. And yeah, making short work of that press move. It looks like he almost can just touch the bottom of it, like Sean was saying. Right foot gave way just as he committed that. Still smiling though. As Anna, it's interesting you talk about her motivation. There's a five minute profile video you can see on the IFSC Facebook page of Anna, where she talks about motivation and her plans for the future. She just loves competing. Make sure you can check out the IFSC Facebook page, scroll down a bit and you will find it. Got one minute 30, you'd have thought, if not this time, she'll have plenty of time for another attempt. But having seen, well, she probably knows that first three girls have done this boulder, so she doesn't want to use up too many attempts, she wants to get it done. Yeah, she definitely knows. I, all the all the regular finalists are good friends with each other too, and so they talk. There, we, there we go. So, four girls on the first boulder, and they've all done it. Shauna Coxley and Megan Mascarena splashed it. And listen, and they've did it on her second go. Just wait for the score to update. And Anna Stor did it on her third go. We just saw an interesting method from Tomoa there. He tried to go both feet off the uh, the big foot instead of the small foot. Decided to forego it after that uh, the foot popped that last time. That is interesting. So he's not going to use. It's, it's <laughs> you'd have thought there's, it's one of those moves. There's only one way to do it, but possibly not. It didn't seem like it. Uh, it looked like you had a little bit too much momentum in that way to hold such a bad finish hold, but it could work. So 20 seconds to go, it'll almost certainly be his last attempt. Which method will he choose? There's the time he left handhold, no. He has time to get back on if he wants. He's gonna try and get it cleaned and get back on the wall, all within time. So he gets back on the wall, but he doesn't have time to get the holds cleaned. Tiny hold, the bonus hold there. This time he's no problem. Yeah, you can see just how off vertical that is right there with that shot. But these slab dinos are one of the trickiest moves I think in competitions. Just because you get you can put bad feet and bad holds and just expect people to hold things somehow. Oh, I think that was the closest anyone's been. I think you're right. That was almost it. So we haven't seen the top yet on men's one. Quick recap, Yoshiyuki Agata over there, very provisional lead over Sean McCollum, just um, Gelmanov. Tomorrow Narasaki also got the bonus. Scoreboard not quite updated. And there we see it, the women's competition, a different story, Megan Mascarena, Sean Coxie, Melissa Lenev and Anna Stor all topping the boulder. Gokora Fuji out of men's one, getting stuck in straight away. And Alex Puccio is over on the right hand side of the wall on women's one. Our next two men seem to be a little bit taller also, which I would think might help on this move. It's not a super height dependent move because I think it will be a jump for anybody, but it could help. You're right actually, when we saw that shot of Kokoro from behind, you, you can see how much closer he looks to the hold. And he just made that look very easy. Your skills of prediction are much better than mine. You <laughs> spotted that one. You can't believe it, Kokoro Fuji. No one else has done it. Yeah, that was a great flash on his part. Comes out and flashes it. Well, he won't need to tell his need to tell his rivals that he did it. He'll just walk back in with three minutes left and a big smile on his face. They'll know. Yeah, and I wonder if we'll see the same thing from Alexi because he's, I think, a similar height. Alex Puccio, 
resident of, Ve of Boulder, Colorado for many a year. Very popular with the local crowd. Oh. That's a different way of trying that one. I think Alex was complaining about a neck slash upper back injury or tweak earlier in ISO today. I know our physio was asking her about it and she had it taped earlier. So I wonder if that was uh, was uh, hurting that a little bit. I saw her grab her neck. Well, it's a, it's a, a tough move on the shoulders and upper back that move as the left hand goes up so if you did have an injury in that area you'd have thought it would be found out by that move there she goes getting the crowd pumped up asking why, they, why they've suddenly gone quiet They're not quiet anymore quite as comfortable with the other girls with these early moves, Alex. She's grabbing the right hand start hold a little different than everyone from what it looks like to me. It seems like everyone else put their hand in with their palm facing to the right and she's going with it facing left. And so I wonder if that gets it, makes it a little bit harder to press up on that right hand. She definitely knows that she has to do it at this point too. I think she does. Even at this early stage, when four girls have done the first boulder, you really need to do it if you're going to be in contention. We've got one minute 15, probably time for one or two more attempts. But yeah, now these started moves that the other girls have not had too much trouble with. Alex not getting on with them at all. Looks more solid this time. It looks like she started off wrong that time because Robin was just calling her down. The, uh, the judge there. I don't think she touched her second foot to the sec st uh, second start foot. So time, beginning to run out for Alex Puccio here. Really not getting on with these starting moves and we could see her again holding her neck that you mentioned. It's definitely a problem there. Yeah, I think that must be your trouble with that. She's also moving her hand over to the worst part of that uh, hold. She was going on the left side of that left start hold, and I don't think that's quite the way. It's a lot worse right there. And I think we saw everybody else keep their hand over right. We did, and she's asking for it to be clean, so possibly planning on doing it that way again. Pulls back on, time's up. This will be a last attempt. Needs this one, Alex. No, that picture is definitely some injury there. Something she's not happy with. I think actually that start foot is the same finish hold as the men have. Just a, <laughs> a duplicate hold. <laughs> yeah. There's definitely something wrong with Alex Pucci there. It would be a real shame for this final if she is injured and not able to give 100%. She certainly isn't moving naturally, doesn't look comfortable. Yeah, hopefully uh, the US team can send back our, our physio, see if anything's wrong. I've just seen someone disappear around the back of the stage. I think it's a physio, I just got a glimpse of them. Here's Alexi. So, you correctly predicted that Kokoro Fuji, being a bit taller, would get on better with this move. Alexi also pretty tall. Yeah, I think it's very possible we're going to see another top here. No problem with the press move. I think that's the first time we've seen a heel hook, though. Mm. Just trying to figure out how to get stood up. Though I guess this is the other problem with being tall, is that this press move is a little, a little harder. So it's, a, I think, a fairly fair boulder. Short climbers like me will always tell you it's harder to be short, but I'm sure Alexi will tell you it's harder to be tall. Oh. That was I, close. Yeah, I think he's going to top it after that, especially after now knowing how to do the whole beginning. It's me on a knacker. We haven't followed her. I think this could be her first attempt. Feet mm. pop. She made it work. That was a close one, yeah.
Yes, that was a flash. So we have a current three-way tie for first in the women's between Miho, Megan, and Shauna. Okay, here's Alexi. Again, heel hook for the press. Oh. He's very close to doing it first time. I think too, when you see the clock counting down, you get a little bit more flustered as the time goes on. Especially when you're that close on your first try. And slab, it's, it's all about going slowly a lot of the time. Just gotta calm yourself down. He's been climbing extremely well this year, Lexi. This is fourth final, this one, in his sixth event. One in Mei Ringen, fifth in Chongqing, third in Mumbai. I think he should take a moment before he gets back on, which it looks like he's going to do here, sitting down. Still very much a contention for the overall title, Alexi. Tony City in third, 262 points. Current leader, Tomoe Narasaki, is on 298. So Alexi can still win this overall title this year. Alexi did flash the bonus here, which is, I think, pretty critical on this boulder. He really doesn't seem to like the, the way of doing it that everyone else has. This is a bit more what we've seen from everyone else. No. You could see that one finger crimp on, crimp on that one. Yeah. From that angle, you could. Extraordinary. The first attempt almost topped the boulder, and we thought next attempt would be it, but no. I've definitely been there before. <laughs> Got to the top and had just no clue how I did it, and then not able to do it again. First attempt, just the best one. No pressure. Such a determined style, Alexi. Just looks like he's going to war sometimes when he gets on a boulder. He wants to crush it. And he needs to go from that now to calm and compose with this upper slab section. You can see Sean Cox and Sean McCall just waiting to go on. Down to the left, having a little chat. Oh. I think Sean doesn't need to look at the scoreboard to know what happened there. No top from Alexi. So Kokoro Fuji, the only man to top that boulder. Scores not updating, I'm afraid. You can see the updated scores on the app and also on the IFSC website, ifsc-climbing.org. Apologies, our scores are not updating right now. So just to confirm, Five out of six women topped women's boulder one. The only climber who didn't was Alex Puccio. And in the men's competition, Kokura Fuji was the only man to top boulder one. And it was and he flashed it. So he takes an early lead with Sean McCall. Out onto men's two. And Sean Coxie onto women's two. Sean, getting straight on. Sean will just take a bit longer to set herself. Seeing the inside flag there by Sean, that's a, a rarely used climbing move. Made it work. This is going to be a boulder that I think just about every climber will do differently. What you can't see is on the underneath of that huge black volume, the bonus volume, there's a series of bolt-on blue holes. Five or six, and the, the ones in the middle are marginally better than the ones out to the side. In the meantime, women's two. Wow, that's a double clutch move. I don't think any other women read it like that from what I saw. I know I didn't. 
Shauna Coxie on for yet another top. I think she is. This last hold's good, so as long as she commits to it, I think she'll do it. No problem to Shauna. You wouldn't have thought there was an overall World Cup win riding on today, the way she's climbing, completely relaxed. That's another flash, I believe. I guess we didn't see her start, but. Let's have a look on the scores at date. I think it might have been. So there we see that move, left hand, and then you just catch the swing with the right on that lower hold. Great climbing from Shauna. When we were watching the girls uh, read that boulder, I think everyone read it as going under the undercling first, and that, I guess, looked too bad to Shauna there. So that was a smart move on her part. So two flashes from Shauna on the first two boulders. Here's Sean trying a different method, a bit more direct. Same as last time, his foot pops, but he holds it. Just needs to get that right hand. Now he has. He needs to work that right foot up now too, so he can really stand up into this. Tell that's hard on the shoulders, Sean clutching his shoulder. As you see there, his form this year, he was third in Innsbruck after a season of seeming to have a monopoly on seventh, which is a horrible position to finish, one place off the finals. And just seemed to own seventh for a while there. And he broke out of it in Innsbruck, and he's broken out of it here again in Vale. Great to see him on form. Seventh is definitely the most disheartening place. It's awesome because he's still t top ten in the world, but seventh is, yeah, right out of finals. It's always upsetting. We had a move similar to this on the that, that press move on our first uh, semifinal boulder today and my shoulders got pumped. So I'm sure this looks much harder even than what we had. So I'm sure he's feeling that. Well, with the altitude that we've already mentioned, it makes moves like that much harder to do and much harder to recover from. Exactly. Sean, take his time here. I'm pretty sure it's not, uh, not keeping anything in the bank here. He'll go at the last second. 10 seconds, Sean. 10 seconds. Still thinking about it. He's underway. Looking very solid on this attempt. Directly to the bonus. No. Yeah, you can see him grabbing his shoulder there. It's got to be a tough move on that. So there we see Kakura Fuji currently leading the way. Sean McCall is provisional second, but he's the only climber to have attempted men's two. Sean Coxie, how's that for a start? Two boulders, both flashed. I could see Rustam doing really well on this boulder just due to his pure strength that he possesses. It seems like that could really come in handy with pressing into that that uh, this next volume. Let's have a look. No, no trouble up to the to the bonus. It's a move that we just saw Sean McCall struggling with, getting that right hand up. It's quite hard to make it out from that angle, but. Quite overhanging that lower wall. The feet are pretty poor. Here's Melissa Lenev. Got the first boulder on her second attempt. I wonder if she'll see that uh, double clutch that Shauna did as well. The way that Shauna did it, was she went for the huge bonus volume and caught a swing with the highest of those three holds that are clustered together in the middle of the, uh, the boulder. Yeah, she flipped her hand as she went. Not only powerful, but also like, coordination intensive. <laughs> the Rustam look, looks like he's got himself slightly higher this time. It's 
Still no joy. Well, men's boulder one only saw one top. That was Kokoro Fuji. His men's two also can see few, if any, tops. Certainly looking that way. I don't believe we've seen Melissa attempt it yet. Did she, uh, that just not shown? I don't know if she's even been onto the wall. Surely, two minutes into the round. She certainly hasn't been up to the bonus. I'm sure she's been on the wall. I haven't seen her yet, though. Minute and a half left on this round. Rustam is trying some interesting things here too. Yes, this is a big cheer for the crowd because it's just off camera. Melissa Lenev's got the bonus hold. Here she is. And now she's got the crimp. She's got the second one. Has she got the top? She has. Those are the same crimps we've seen on a couple of boulders now here in, uh, uh, at the Fail World Cup. So everyone knows what they're expecting when they're about to grab those. See that again from Melissa. Yep, stop the swing like Shauna did with the right hand. Rustam, 10 seconds to go. Will he have another attempt? He will. No joy for Rustam. Heads back inside. So, doesn't have a top yet. Yoshiyuki Gata, there he is. He's getting ready to attempt men's two. And Megan Mascarenas is out off screen on women's two. It'll be interesting to see how Megan does on this jump. I was just talking to her earlier today in ISO uh, for before semifinals, and she was saying how she hates dinos. <laughs> I think she's great at them and just doesn't like them, but she thinks she's bad, so it's kind of a head game there. Does that uh, affect you when you walk out and look at a boulder sometimes? Do you think before you've even pulled off the ground, do you think, oh, no, not for me? Definitely. I know I personally don't like slabs that much, and so whenever I see one, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> We might, we might see a different method of doing it if Megan really doesn't like that sort of move. Possible, but these route setters are really good at forcing what they want. And I think from what we've seen, they really they wanted that double clutch to the volume and the flipping to the, the right hand. Like I said, she's good at them, so hopefully we'll see it here. Doesn't quite look comfortable just yet. It needs to get herself set. Yeah, there she goes. I think it's all in her head. She looks pretty good at dinos to me. And that's what I told her today in ISO. I think this is her first attempt, Megan. If so, she's looking pretty good for a flash here. Just needs to go with that black hole with the left hand. Initially pinches it and just rolls her fingers onto it totally different method than we've seen other people do. Looking very controlled here. It's a good hold she's going for. Yeah. She's got it. We 
I'm just waiting to confirm, but I'm pretty sure that was a flash from Megan. Great for her in front of the home crowd again, too. Let's have another look at that. Megan Mascarenas, women's bowler two. Once that right hand landed, she was away. So if you're just tuning in, these are the Boulder World Cup finals from Vail, Colorado. We've got Kyra Condi alongside me. She competed in the semi-finals, offering some expert insight. Knows a couple of the competitors pretty well, the uh, American girls. And she just told me that uh, Megan Mascarenas doesn't like dinos, and Megan Mascarenas flashed the dino. <laughs> She doesn't like them, but like I said, she's quite good at them. She's very good at them. This is the closest we've seen one of the guys get to standing up into this. This does look promising. Now, it's gonna, you'll see the black tape cuts in there down the low, the low, the low and left of his foot. So he can use the rat, and he needs to. Yeah, it's going to be all about keeping the feet on here, and as his, his foot just popped. <laughs> so he's got 30 seconds. That was a pretty promising attempt. I'm sure he'll get on again. He will. He's just asking for it to be cleaned. I wonder if that last move will be a left hand move or a right hand. It could really be either. So he's got 10 seconds here. There he goes, final attempt. Like I said, that press will really take it out of your shoulders. And so, I wonder if he'll be able to do it here again. Never been in a World Cup final before, Yoshiyuki Agata, but he's part of a very strong Japanese team. He's already been top 10 this year, he was ninth in Mumbai. He won't get that one though. Probably doesn't realize that he came by far the closest of anyone yet to doing that. We just have a quick recap of the results. So, Megan Mascarena, Shauna Coxie, and Melissa Lenev, all top two boulders. Miho Nanaka, Anna Stroff, top one. Alex Puccio, yet to register a top. We believe Alex Puccio is carrying some sort of minor neck or upper back injury. Kokura Fuji there, the only man with a successful top so far. Samoa Narasaki is out. Samoa on the left, currently ranked first in World Cup rankings. I think this could be a boulder that suits him. The men's boulder one suited his compatriot, Kokura Fuji. I think this might suit Samoa. I think actually being tall might be a disadvantage on this one for uh, Kokura. We shall see. I was thinking that as well as um, uh, Yoshiki was on it. Looks like we're going to see another flash from Anna here. Anna Stor, again, we assume this is the first attempt. This will be a flash if she gets it. Oh, no, drops off. Three minutes to go. From there, most of the girls have cruised to the top. That's the first time we've seen someone fall there. It looked like she didn't quite commit to it, which may be something to do with a previous finger injury. Those crimps are really small. You really have to dig in on them, so. So tomorrow in Arasaki, just checking out men's two. Extraordinary to think that before this year, tomorrow in Arasaki is only World Cup was in Haiyang in 2014 where he came fifth and now he's leading the overall standings his first full season not bad I watched him at the Youth World Championships in Arca and he put on a really impressive performance there as well so I was figuring we'd be seeing him as one of these some of the circuits coming up he's a good sport climber too I believe I know he was in the final in Arca for both bouldering and sport real all-rounder he's uh, 
someone that's been talked about for a couple of years now and he's very much delivered on this first full season. One in Chongqing, second in Mumbai, second in Innsbruck. Can he make it four podiums in a row? So none of the men getting on with men's two so far. Anna cruising that first jump. And no trouble with the lower section. Just full commitment on this last move, I think, is what it's going to take. Yeah, does it? It looks like she's struggling somewhat with that left hand. She doesn't seem to want to pull off it full bore. Yeah, I wonder if that's the one. I believe she had an A2 pulley injury, and so it could have something to do with that. Even winning a World Cup is not quite worth it. Maybe it is uh, popping another pulley. Looks like both of these competitors are going to win. See, hometown of Innsbruck competed in a home World back. Cup three weeks ago in front of a crowd that absolutely loves her. She's getting plenty of support from this crowd as well, though. So, no, Tomoa not getting on with this. I thought he would. Looks like he's getting a bit frustrated. Five seconds to go, Tomo pulls on and off screen, so does Anna Shaw. We'll follow Tomo for now. Up to the bonus. He's off. Anna Shaw is still climbing though. There she is. Can she make it this time? No. I think the other thing that Anna was doing that the other girls didn't do was she kept her foot on the on the semicircle, the, the 360 volume on the left, while everyone else dropped that foot and kept their foot over right, which allowed them to do more of a shoulder move, kind of static to that last hold. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see Alex Puccio here. This seems like something that's her style. As I say, we you said she was suffering with a minor upper back or neck injury and we saw her on the first boulder she was clutching her neck didn't seem to be comfortable at all we think she's had a bit of physio backstage there we have it Megan Mascarenas, Shauna Coxie and Melissa Lenev have all top two boulders Mihona Naka, Anna Stroh top one Alex Puccio who's currently out on the mats still waiting for her first top Kyra Condi sat next to me, believes this could suit Alex. Certainly be a big cheer for the crowd. She manages it. I think there the beta two was to get a drop knee over on the left. It's a little bit of a precise move to keep a foot over right there. You can't quite tell on the live stream, but those holds have just had like a ball on them that you kind of grab. They're usually used as feet. Those holes that we're referring to, just the ones that you the just ones saw getting brushed. Now the ones her right hands are going to be on. Yeah, it's about the size of a golf ball that's kind of half sunken into it, I guess. It's Kakura Fuji. Men's two, looking at it quizzically, wondering if he's missing something. Hasn't seen the top yet, that boulder. You can hear the crowd getting behind Alex there. She definitely doesn't look comfortable. It's definitely something she's not quite right physically. She's been looking so strong in the other rounds. I'm hopefully she can get that neck feeling better and. Bring, uh, bring the game on these next couple boulders here. <laughs> it's Kukuji, uh, Kokoro Fuji, excuse me. Our winner in Mumbai. Tenth last time out in Innsbruck. This time, Alex Puccio getting it done. Makes the dyno and controls it with the right hand. 
suddenly looks solid, having struggled with the lower section. Should go with the left hand now. Hopefully we'll see a top here. Wait for the cheer if she manages it. There it is. Don't Match. forget. Yep. <laughs> Bit of a heart in the mouth moment there. I thought she might forget a year off the circuit, but no. She knows the rules. So, a successful top from Alex Capuccio. Third attempt, I believe. I think it was the third attempt. Unless we missed one. If you talk to the root setters, do you know what they intended for the last move of this boulder for the men? Yes, they, uh, just quickly, that was Alex's third attempt on the boulder that she just successfully topped women's two. Yep, so for the top part of this boulder, the root setters envisage that, you'll envisage that you will use that arete on the left. You see the black tape suddenly cuts away, so the arete is fair game. You can use the arete. You climb using the arete, work your way up that, and then you get a tow hook underneath the huge bonus volume, and that just steadies you enough to go for the top hole. The top hole isn't very good. Oh, Mr. Kuro, he likes getting the crowd fired up. I've seen that from him a few times today. Another Japanese climber has really hit form. Four this year, never done better than fourth in the World Cup. He's already won one this year and he was third in Kazo as well. Yeah, I no. wonder if the height was working against him there, like you said earlier. So there we see it, Megan Mascarini, Shorter Coxie, Melissa Lenev, two tops currently lead the way. Miho Nanaka, who's about to come out into women's two, has one top. Anna Stewart and Alex Puccio also have one top. Up to the so there, Kakura Fuji, the only man who's topped a boulder in this final so far today. Extraordinary. Yeah, a lot, a lot less uh, tops for the men here. A lot of bonuses. Yeah, every man has got every bonus so far. He rubs off. Another climber I suspect might get on with this. Although he is tall, this, this, this boulder is a fight. Lexi is good at fighting. He's really making this quick work at this beginning here, so even if he slips off this top section, he'll get a good second go, maybe even third go in. So he'll go, once he's got himself sorted, he'll go for the le that arete on the left. You can see where the tape cuts in. There it is. And that's all about keeping that foot. So there's the toe hook I was talking about. Not a great hold. You can see him just take his time. He's not done yet. I think he might even want to squeeze almost on the other on the other red. Oh, Lexi rubs up. That is heartbreaking. Really not a good hold he's going for. That <laughs> looks heartbroken. Yeah, and even falling off, matching the finish is one of the saddest things in a, in a World Cup, just because you get nothing. You still just get the bonus. Uh, I mean, he's got to somehow pick himself up psychologically now because he's got two and a half minutes left. We watch it here. How's this for close? One hand. No. Just the momentum of bringing his left hand over. Got that right hand off. So here's Miho Nanaka. Our winner from Mumbai. Incredibly consistent this year. Been on four podiums out of five so far. Three third place finishes and one win. Plus a 14th in Mehring in, in the first event of the season. And I think she still has one more year in the youth circuit as well. Born in 1997. So, impressive, young <laughs> climber. You're younger than me, probably at 18. Alexa is ready to go. One minute, K 
15. Be interesting to see what Alexi's up to, trying to recover from the disappointment. Here he is. And just needs to establish himself now. Like on men's boulder one, Alexi, his first attempt is his best. Neon and Nakra sticking that dyno. Gets the crimp with the right hand. She'll follow through with the left. Just trying to figure out a way to get her feet comfortable. They're looking a little uncomfortable on this move. She did look uncomfortable. She still doesn't look like she's comfortable on the boulder yet. No. You really don't want to hesitate on these boulders. The more you hesitate, the more your skin sweats and the more you get tired. And in this altitude, it's you just there's no room for error like that. So this will be the final attempt from both climbers. They're both off the ground. They're allowed to finish their attempts. No joy from Alexi. He knows how close that was. Understandably looking quite frustrated. No joy for Miho either. So we have it provisionally leading the way. Megan Mascarenas, Shauna Coxey from Melissa Lanev, Miho Nanaka, Anna Stor, and Alex Puccio. If you're new to climbing, we'll explain the scoring system in just a second. And in the men's competition, Kokura Fuji, the only man with a top so far, and that was on Boulder 1. Interesting, every male climber has got every bonus on every boulder. Yeah, it seems like they've been making the boulders just get exponentially harder as they go up. I heard a couple of the, um, uh, the European climbers talking about it, how usually in other World Cups, if you get the bonus, you will get a top. But especially on the boulders so far in this competition, that has not been the case. Because it just keep getting, like, every move gets harder. And Shauna Coxie also bring out a big white shopping bag and a towel. Well prepared. Now, men's three has the potential to be one of the most entertaining boulders we've seen for a while. My Karen Condi next to me smiling at the prospect of it. It's going to be a really interesting boulder. Could be a sh shoulder breaker almost. <laughs> <laughs> just watching uh, Sean just try it there. So, for those of you just joining us, we're live in Vail in Colorado. Kyra Condi is alongside me. She competed in the semi finals, offering expert analysis and insight. And we're just watching Sean McCall. That's how you do it. So, now, this there is. Countless ways of getting over to the left. What on earth is Sean trying here? He's okay. facing the crowd, yeah. <laughs> He's a showman, isn't he? He's just above our commentary position. You can see that blue tent. We're, uh, we're just behind that. We've got a good view of Sean. I, uh, this is another boulder. I think we're not going to see anybody do the same way twice. I don't think so. I think if the, each climber could do it twice they do it a different way I don't think we'll even say two identical attempts Sean this boulder is not over still yeah no he's not but Sean great climbing so so imaginative Sean and Coxie falling off women's three I was about to say for those of you new to climbing scoring system so the most important score is the number of tops so we have four boulders in this final whoever tops the most wins if the climbers are tied on tops it comes down to how many attempts it took to get those tops if they're still tied it comes down to who got the most bonus holes and if they're still tied it's who took the most attempts to get to those bonus holes so we have a four tiered scoring system can cause one or two headaches as uh, we try and work out the permutations in the last round 
the bonus hold, of course, is the pink taped hold that uh, is right above where the camera is right now on the women's three. You should hopefully see it. All boulders have a top hold and also a bonus hold halfway up. This woman's problem is almost all about balance, I think. None of the holds are extremely positive except for that left hand one that she's on. That initial move left onto the big blue volume that Sean has just put her left foot on. That is one of the, the tougher moves on this boulder. Didn't have too much trouble with it. Didn't get it first time, but I think this is second attempt. You can see her trying to crimp the bottom of the volume, it looks like there. Just trying to figure out. So there's a bonus hold that we just mentioned. No problem for shorter. And as I say, if you're new to climb, there's no mistake in which one the bonus hold is. Pink tape and a big gold sign saying bonus. These are, I believe, new holds as well. They're part of like a bubble wrap series that eGrips always does, or has been pretty famous for. And uh, I bet a lot of these competitors have never seen these holds before. Shauna Cox, who put a lot into that attempt, slipped off and just got 20 seconds to recover, which at any time would be hard, but at this altitude, doubly difficult. Interesting here, I think Shauna might not be going for another attempt. She's not known. Sean sticking that iron cross move again. It was great to watch Sean on this last time, and it looks like he's going for roughly the same technique. So he'll swing leftwards here in one movement and then catch it. You see him panting with the effort and the altitude. Here we see him, he's going to jump leftwards. Well, he did last time. There it is. Those volumes are a pretty positive pinch as well. So you can see him pinching it with his left hand. He slipped off here on his last attempt. It's going to be all about trusting the feet and not moving too quickly. It's not pretty for Sean McCall this bit, but it's effective. Crowd egging him on. He's Rick really fighting. Derek stared at that top hold, willing it closer. He looks almost a little stuck. Yeah. Remember, no issue with time. He's already left the ground, so he can complete his attempt. He's trying to stand up here. Sean can't believe that. Well, he's somehow still smiling. I'm not sure how. Just enjoying himself in some of this almost home crowd. It's the closest he gets to a home World Cup. We haven't got one in Canada this year. There we go. Megan Mascarenas, Sean Cox and Melissa Lennon, Mihun and Naka, Anna Stewart and Alex Puccio make up the women's top six in this final. And in the men's, Kokura Fuji is still the only man with a top in this final. Sean McCall in second came about as close as you can come without topping. You can quite manage it. They didn't show it on camera there, but Rustam just basically static to that first move. <laughs> there he is. Now then, what we saw Sean do is put his feet on the right-hand volume and his arms, his hands on the left-hand one. It looks like Rustam is thinking the same thing after a bit of deliberation. <laughs> Melissa Lenev getting that tricky first move and just missing the bonus there. So Rustam not dissimilar to how Sean did it. I say, this is a great boulder. At altitude as well, it becomes a real endurance boulder. You're on it for a long time, and it's all body climbing. It's legs, arms, core, shoulders. 
Yeah, it's it's definitely a fight, but Rustam, oh, foot slip. Yeah, like I was saying earlier, for those who didn't hear, there's no holds on any of those. Like the only actual holds on this climb are those two start holds and that finish hold, which isn't much of a hold in itself either. It's a small crimp that's pretty flat, I believe. But Rustam did that first move a lot different than Sean did by getting his foot up on top of the, the volumes right over the start feet. And that made him almost just be able to stand up into it and static it instead of a more dynamic movement like Sean did. Which I think looked easier. Here's another something there. Met women's three. We haven't seen that much of it. It's a balancey start. You can see her left foot just she had it in the bolt of that of that hold there. So that's a that's a trick a lot of seasons competitors use <laughs> of using the the most uh, surface area I guess you can get on your shoe. And just that bolt hole in there. If you get enough of it in there. Let's watch this iron cross move. Rustan Gomenov, he's going to go up and put palm of each hand on one of each of those volumes above him. No, he's not. One word from me. I think that is the only way to do it. I don't know. Yeah, he went for a different method that time, even though last time he made it look fairly easy. I think he's going to go for the old method again. No. Sam leads with the right hand. He did that by... Uh, camming his foot in between those two triangle volumes that his, feet is, that his feet are currently on. But I don't know if it necessarily looks easier. Well, from here, you'd have thought he's at a major disadvantage to Sean's method because his feet are well below any usable holds, but doesn't look like he needs his feet. Wow. That is pure pinch strength from yeah. the Sam Gomenov. I have to say, when he first got his hand over to the left I really didn't understand how he'd get his feet up and that's how he's looking just as stuck as Sean was up higher though right now he's got his chalk bag <laughs> stuck between his backside and his foot and he can't access it now it's free but it's too late I think he won't forget about his chalk bag for now he'll just go for it Unless he can find some sort of semi-rest here. There he goes. There he goes. Yeah. Now we see him pumping up the crowd. It's great. All the uh, climbers this evening getting the crowd pumped up. Good to see. You won't, can't see it on screen. Melissa Lenev's walking off. She's done with women's three. Didn't manage to top it. Neither did Shona Coxley. You can see her watching Rustam there. This is a very entertaining boulder, even for the other competitors. So Rustam, he has fashioned a rest, I'd imagine, on the the hips and the lower back. That's not a very easy position to hold, but at least his arm's going to rest. You know, I can't tell from here, but some of these blue volumes have a good texture on them, and some of them are quite slippery. It looks like these have a texture, but they're still not that positive. Now I assume he's going to have to get that left foot onto the, the volume that his left hand's on. I don't think he can go from here, but I didn't think he could do the lower section the way he did. He proved me wrong once already on this attempt. How long has he been off the ground now? It must be over two minutes. It's been a while. Oh, he's so close. He has such good hand strength that, yeah, I think he'll be able to get it. Yes. I'm sure you heard the cheer from the crowd there. Russell Gomanov, what a piece of climbing. That was a really impressive fight I think we just saw. <laughs> you can see him laying on the ground from that effort, my God. Great for mere mortals like us. We see the crowd Then The sun's back out here in Vale, and we've just seen fantastic action. What more do you want on the on a Saturday evening. I think he broke that boulder in, <laughs> in technical terms, <laughs> skipping the Iron Cross move after his first attempt. It's great for mere mortals like myself, and I'm sure plenty of people watching that don't climb at this level, to see world-class climbers thrutching and battling their way up a, a boulder like that. 
if you've ever been off witch climbing or crack climbing or up a corner you'll you'll understand exactly what they're going through and it's great to watch climbers of this ability and this level having that same struggle it doesn't matter if you climb 6b or 8b fighting hard and feeling like you're going to fall off feels pretty much the same regardless of the grade so we just recover our breath I'm sure Rustam Galvanov backstage doing the same thing as Yoshiyuki Ogata comes out latest on men's three he made quick work of that first move in the same way that uh, Rustam did it, getting a higher foot and making it a little bit more static instead of a dynamic movement. Now Sean McCall got to here and looked solid and fell off. But he's not done yet. Not by a long way. He's already gotten that foot higher up, like you were saying. Might help, might have helped Rustam on that last move. Looks like he's going to try and turn around, almost. It's so hard not to rush these final moves, too, usually, because you're, you're just staring the top, <laughs> top down, and it's like, oh, I want to just <laughs> grab it. But <laughs> especially in this, if you rush it, you're off. Overwhelming urge to just lunge for that final hold. Yoshiyuki Agata, not succumbing to that urge. Take his time, very controlled. He's got it. That was the same way we saw Sean attempt it, just fingertips on the bottom of it. And Megan just got this first move of wins three as well. Remember, you don't have to hang on that top hold. You actually have to hang your weight off it, as we saw from Yoshiyuki just pushed the tips of fingers on both hands against it. And he's done. So Megan Mascarenas, this bowler hasn't seen a top yet. We saw Shano struggle with this match here. No problem for Megan. And this final hold is slopier than it looks. It's Flat, completely flat, but sloped down. So I think she's going to get it. She has got it. First top of women's ball to three, Megan Mascarenas. I believe that'll put her in a solid lead ahead of uh, Shauna now. Before she was only beating her on a count back to the semifinal round, where Megan was in third and Shauna was in sixth. Or Megan was in fourth, I believe, actually. Yes, Megan was fourth. And she heads back in. There we have it. Megan taking the lead, early lead, but it's a slim one, only on bonus attempts. So she leads away ahead of Shauna Kotze. I don't think this is quite updated yet, though, as well, because that should be a top for Megan it there. It should be, yes. We wait for that to be top. Wait for that to be refreshed. Well spotted. So Anna Storr is their women's three. Tomoa Narasaki, the latest climber to go to war with men's three. Yeah, we haven't seen much of women's three, mainly because men's three has provided such unusual entertainment it's been hard to to look anywhere else such an unusual boulder let's have a look how Tomoa takes it straight into the iron cross he's a great climber to watch he just leaves it he just tries so hard I believe and <laughs> he's just so strong he fights getting to this position a lot faster than everybody else has. He is. One hand on the finish. There no trouble. 
That's what it means, Sim. And that was a flash, I believe. I believe it was. It's so finally, we can have a good look at women's three. As I say, apologies we haven't seen more of it. But men's three is uh, so unusual and entertaining. It's somewhat drawn our focus. Anna pulls on. This move left onto that big blue volume, not easy. Just did it really statically there. Got plenty of time here, Anna. Loves climbing in Vale. Ninth time here, ninth final. Not a bad record. sure what attempt Megan topped that on, but I thought it might have been her third. There we have it. No, second. Second attempt, so Megan Mascarene is streaky away in this women's final ahead of Shauna Coxie and Melissa Lenev. Don't forget, if Shauna Coxie finishes on the podium today, she is the overall Boulder World Cup champion for 2016, regardless of what anyone else does. Anna having a hard time figuring out how she got over there. We discussed this earlier, yeah, often your first attempt, you're not really expecting much, it's the best one. Anna su unfortunately suffering with that syndrome right now. I think too, a lot of these climbers have been climbing for so long, and I know I, I do this at least, that uh, I climb rather instinctively, and so I can never remember what I did. <laughs> Bit of frustration kicking in there for Anna, quickly followed, the scream quickly followed by a smile. Doesn't seem to stay annoyed for long. 30 seconds left. These attempts won't be taking much out of her physically, I wouldn't have thought. Can afford a few. Holds it this time. There she is, yeah. I think she'll need at least a bonus here. So Anna's off the floor, she can finish this attempt. These slab climbs take a lot more out of you than you would think they would as well. You just have to keep your body so tight so, so for so long that you're way more exhausted afterwards than you would think you should be. So it is hard to get on right after falling like that. Never really seemed to get on with that boulder Anna stuck. So we see there tomorrow Narasaki Yoshiyuki Agata. Some Gelmanov and Kokura Fuji, the four men who have a top so far, Sean McCall and Alexei Rubsov, still always in their first tops. Megan Mascarenas, perfect three from three. Three tops from three bowlers. Four attempts. Sean Akotsi follows her with Melissa Lenev in third. Miona Naka Anastro and Alex Puccio make up the rest of the final. So Kokura Fuji, latest climber to go to battle. Oh, oh. men's swing. Now he tried to do that very relaxed, static style. Yeah, it looked like his foot popped off there before he was able to get the other hand up. The root setters won't like that. They want uh, a spectacular jump. That's Fuji. We believe she's carrying some sort of injury. Be interesting. Doesn't look like the same climber we saw in the qualifiers and semi-finals. It's been over a year since her last World Cup final as well though, so it might take a little while to get back into the groove. So Kokura Fuji is trying to step out left. No. I believe if he does this, he'll be the only guy with two tops so far. He will, yes. 
the only person to top Boulder 1. So he can go into the lead if he tops this third Boulder. So far, we've seen three tops from Rustam Gelmanov, Yoshiyuki Agata, and Tomoa Narasaki. Alex is going about this in a lot different way. I believe everyone else had their left hand up, which she's about to do. <laughs> and now it's... This is more like it from Alex. She has great grip strength, though. If she, if she grabs this right, she should stick it. But it looks like she missed it just slightly there. Just under two minutes on the clock. Plenty of time left for another attempt, though. So if you are just tuning in, I have Kyra Conley alongside me. We're watching a thoroughly entertaining final here in Vail, Colorado. This is Alex Puccio in your foreground of your screen on women's three, a bowler that has so far only been topped by Megan Mascarenas. Kora Fuji on the left there, aiming to become the first man with two tops in this final. I think if he just slows down and really just takes his time with this top, he should get it. This is where being tall could count against him though. You can see him struggling to make that right foot stick. It's just too much leverage from having long limbs. The other advantage though of being tall is that he can reach this final hold from lower feet so he doesn't have to work his feet up quite so much. Very true. Now most climbers have had the left foot on the volume that his right foot is on. So he's doing this, if you like, back to front. Now he's switching round. That's what we've seen for most of the climbers. It'll just get him a tiny bit closer having his left foot there instead of his right. Yeah, and like I said, just staring down that top hold is just agonizing sometimes. Tantalizing. 10 seconds to go. Even if he slips off now, I'd be surprised if he had the energy for another go, let alone the time. Certainly not gonna have the time. So he'll settle himself here. Time's up, he can finish his attempt, but he won't get another. This one has to count. I think. Almost losing his balance there. Just slowly. He's got it with one hand. You can see him smiling, he's enjoying this. Just considering whether to reposition that right leg. And he's got it. Shakura Fuji takes the lead in this World Cup final here in Vail. It just takes a couple of seconds to milk up the applause of the crowd, and so he should. First man with two tops now. You see him there, leading the way. Tomoa Narasaki and Yoshiyuki Agata making up an all Japan top three. Rustam Gelmanov, Sean McCall, and Alexei Rubsov follow. Extraordinary. There must be something in the water in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Their whole team is just so impressive throughout the entire circuit. So, Megan Mascarena so far with a clean sweep. She's topped all three boulders. Sean Cox follows her, Melissa Lemelev in third. So Lexi Rubsoff, who we saw having an absolute battle earlier on with Men's Boulder 2, is in for another battle here with Men's Boulder 3. Strength, not something that Alexi Rubsoff is lacking though. As you'll know as you've ever shaken his hand. Miho just made quick work of that first move as well. Yeah, let's have a look at Miho Nanaka hit. And, oh, and Alexei Rubsov. Quickly getting that boulder. Quickly becoming the second man to have two tops in this final. And I think that'll uh, push him ahead. No, sorry, that is his first top. Excuse me. Oh, we'll okay. Just wait. That puts him up into provisional second. That was a flash as well from Alexei. So, Miho Nanaka 
The only climber out on the mats now. Provisional fourth right now. She's got one top and that was a flash. Alexi just finished that boulder in under a minute, I believe. <laughs> that was a barely, barely boulder. And no problem for Alexi Rubsov. People keep in mind we are almost three quarters of the way done with our final round. We are getting closer and closer to the finish. After this, you can all go home. You can all go and relax, but for right now, I need you. So women's ball the three that Miho and Naka is currently studying. It's a balancey start. Move left onto that big blue volume. There it is. Thank you, Mr. Director. See it here, the move left. You can see you're using that uh, the bolt hole in the in the middle of the hold there. You're not allowed to use the T-nuts, which are the actual holes in the wall, but any uh, bolt holes on a hold. So you can see that hole right next to her knee. Those are fair game. And sometimes they are better than the actual hole. <laughs> so it's rare, but it does happen. We saw her putting that one to good use. Good, nice controlled attempt so far from Miho. That bonus hold is just causing a few problems. Time for at least one more go. Yeah, Miho Nanaka's already got one top. Should lead at least another if she's going to feature on the podium today. Quick recap of the men's results. So. Kora Fuji, the only man with two tops so far, leading the way ahead of Alexei Rubsov. Tamara Narasaki and Yoshiyuki Agata make up the rest of the top four. And Alexei breaking up the top three, which was all Japan until this last boulder. Speaking of Japan, Miho Nanaka. Working her way up the slab, one hop of the foot, and she's down on the mat. She still has 30 seconds to get back on the wall for one final attempt here. Yeah, Miho's first podium of this year was in her home country in Kazo, and since then it's been podiums all the way. She was third in Kazo, then third the next week in Chongqing, one in Mumbai, and third again in Innsbruck. So, climbing on the home soil really kick-started her season. In most years, when Shauna Coxie isn't as dominant as she is this year, that might be enough to win the overall title, the form that Miho is in. It seems like climbing on your home turf really, really helps as we just, I mean, we've been seeing with Megan Mascarenas this whole round here. And I don't think that they'll give that to her as a as a control. It was closer than her other attempts, but I think she, she'll have no bonus on that one. I wouldn't have thought so. I'm not sure the scores have updated just yet. No, they haven't given it to her. And Megan Mascarenas still leads away. Shauna Coxie second, Melissa than ever third. Remember if Shauna Coxie finishes on the podium here, she wins the overall title. And we're down to the last boulder now. We'll see Shauna and Sean out on men and women's number four. So Kokora Fuji looking for his second win of the year. He's the only man with two tops so far. Those two tops took him four attempts. And we're about to see the final boulder. Stevens competition. And it gets to the stage where the maths comes into it. If Shauna flashes this boulder and Megan does not top, I believe Shauna can win. But other than that, I'm pretty sure Megan has almost cinched it. Yes, yeah, she can't be caught by Melissa Lenev. Or anybody else. You're right. So, Shauna Coxie, the only person that can catch Megan Mascarenas. And she needs to flash this boulder if she's going to do it. We mentioned it earlier, this women's boulder four features a foot first move. You go first with the feet, swivel around, bring your hands. Hopefully Shauna will do it that way and you'll see what I mean. There's another start hold that Shauna just didn't use and that just cost her the flash. On such margins, our World Cup's decided. 
can even happen to the most seasoned competitors, as you can see there. So here we go. Should probably go feet first to the bonus. Thank you, Shauna, for illustrating what I meant. Now, if she flashes this, she will be, in a way, disappointed because it would, could have been enough to win. As it is, it won't be because she was called down from her first attempt by the judges. I think she's going to get it now. The next hold is a good hold. I think she is, and she'll kick herself. So kick herself. She didn't get it the first time. Well, this does look like something that I think Megan can also top, so it might not come down to that fumble at the start. So the one thing that that does do is it means Shauna Coxey is the overall Boulder World Cup champion. So if she doesn't win today, I'd have thought that will be some consolation. <laughs> The reason I say that is that Shauna Coxey now cannot be caught on the podium. She can still win today. Actually. I guess she can, yeah, as if Megan doesn't get bonus for three attempts. As ever, the bouldering scoring system causing one or two issues with the maths and the permutations. So Shauna can win today. One thing we do know, Shauna Cox is the 2016 Boulder World Cup champion. She will finish on the podium today, and that is enough to secure the overall title. A well-deserved title, I believe. <laughs> well-deserved title. It's very rare we've seen such a dominant season. Now, it didn't look... Hmm, I believe... Like Sean McCall wasn't quite a legal start, but the judges are right there, and we only just caught the edge of it, so... Yeah. Go there he is doing decision. that knee bar that you mentioned right when they were, uh, when they were reading the route. Yep, so... You keep that knee bar ideally for quite a long time. You do quite a few moves with the knee bar still in. There we see Shauna Coxie. She, she does take the lead today. But if Megan Mascarenas tops or gets the bonus in less than three attempts, she will overtake Shauna. But Shauna wins the overall title. She is the 2016 champion on the same day she found out she was being awarded an MBE in the honours list in Britain. There's some days you remember, I suspect this might be one. Sean looking a little tired now. Trying to find some other way to start that boulder. Must be a pretty hard start. Don't know if that was quite a legal start again. I saw one of the judges standing up, but these volumes for anybody who hasn't climbed on them have an interesting texture to say the least. It's, I find it hard to grab onto. Um, it's sharp, but also not that sticky. And so you really have to grab, like, but you end up just slipping off half the time. So Sean McCall, uh, he'll finish today's final in sixth. Elsewhere, all to play for in the men's competition. And Sean McCall's just in front of our commentary position now. Just chatting with some friends. I don't think it's a, no, it's not a technical appeal. He's just discussing the final with friends. I don't think Melissa can um, better her position right now. She's in third currently with two tops, but a third, even a flash on this boulder will keep her, will secure her a third position. Yeah, a top of any description on this boulder for Melissa will secure third. She can take as many attempts as she wants. She can have 100 if she wants. A top will do it. See their men's four getting cleaned. It's it's a a hard boulder. I know that sounds 
ridiculous in a World Cup final, but even by the standards of World Cup finals, this is a particularly hard bowl that Sean McCall didn't make too much progress on it. That seems to be the theme of this comp so far. From what hard. I was, yeah, from what I've been talking to uh, the people who've been doing the entire circuit, that these have been some of the hardest qualifying semi-final and I, I looks like final bowlers of any of the competitions this, like, thus far. We have not had a lot of tops, that's for sure. The starting position of that men's final doesn't even look easy. We saw Sean kind of almost, not quite, but almost cheating it. And probably because that right hand is so bad. So Melissa Lenev, she needs to top this boulder to secure a podium place. She'll still be in provisional third, whether she tops it or not, but in order to make it certain, she needs a top. That would be three tops from her. So the best she can do is third, which would be a very good result. Needs this, though, needs to make it certain. One minute, 45 on the clock, and it's in her hands. This is a really powerful move right there. So she leads the defeat towards a bonus hold. Still smiling. That to always. me just looks like she's tired. <laughs> I think that's something she'd normally be very capable of. <laughs> it did look that way. Just couldn't quite fight for that one more move. Sam Galmanov, he's not a man that'll give up, he'll stop fighting. You can just see his hand One sliding off that, that right hand hold. On their final time of the evening. He can still finish second here for Sam Galmanov. He can't catch Kurafuji. If he gets Second top, he'll move up provisionally to second. Yeah, Kokoro is the only only man with two tops. Actually, Rustam hasn't found that uh, knee bar that we saw Sean using. He hasn't, no. None of the, neither Sean nor Rustam had much joy with ball to four. So Rustam, he'll take fifth today. As we watch Melissa, final attempt. She's going to give this everything. There Six at this time. Come on, Melissa. Top this and she scores third place. No. Though I do believe the bonus there will help her. Help her keep her third position, I mean. Yeah, so Melissa M Lenev, we see it there. Provisionally third. Shauna Coxie, provisionally winning with Megan Mascarena still to climb on this final bowler. Miho Nanaka, Anna Stur, and Alex Puccio. Make it up the rest of that. Women's top six. So Shauna Coxley will finish on the podium and that means she will win the overall title this year. Whether she wins today will be decided by this woman, Megan Mascarenas. In order to win, Megan will need to get the bonus by her third attempt. And if she does that, she'll win on a count back. And if she tops, then she'll win by uh, just scores but she'll have four tops yeah Megan can take as many attempts as she wants as long as she tops very controlled so far doesn't look tired looks in complete control this far and here if she gets this bonus she's she's won and there she goes there was a big cheer from the crowd I suspect those People following on the, the live scores in the IFSC app understand what that bonus meant. 
I think she's going to make it even more obvious to those without the app. Ah, she's going to get it now, for sure. Megan Mascarone is in front of her home crowd. Second year in a row. Four boulders, four tops. Such an impressive performance. Stunning performance from Megan Mascarenas. We're just waiting for the scores to update. I'm pretty sure that was four tops in five attempts, which in a, a, a World Cup final is an absolutely extraordinary performance. Especially one set this hard as we were talking about. None of these boulders are easy. Yeah, just to confirm, Megan Mascarenas. She'll win today, four tops in five attempts. So she flashed three of the boulders and she needed two attempts on the other. Absolutely dominant today, Megan Mascarenas. Shauna will be behind her in a close second with three tops and four. And now we're still waiting to see who will we'll be third. We are, Melissa Lenev is currently in third, but vulnerable. She can be caught by any of the three climbers below her. It'll come down to if they top and in how many attempts. Well. Well, in, in all the excitement on the women's competition, we'd uh, almost forgotten about poor old Yoshihuki Ogata. He found this knee bar. Oh. Interesting way of trying that men's fourth boulder. He tried to go at it as a double clutch there, which I think might be the beta for the top section. Not so much there, maybe. Those top two right before uh, the angle changes there are the most positive of any of those holds at the bottom there. They have a little bit more of a lip, but still at that angle and in this weather, not, not great. I think that knee bar is going to be pretty pretty key. Just riding that out, try and get all the way over there, which I think is what we're going to see here. Looked like he almost tried to catch a tow hook up on that uh, that middle volume there. Yuki's got 20 seconds. None of the men really been anywhere near this boulder. Caused all sorts of problems. No bonuses so far for any of the climbers on this men's boulder four. And I have to say, nobody's actually been that close. No, I don't think we've seen anybody stick this this left hold, like the hold just left of him right now. I think he might get it this time. Oh. Couldn't quite hold the pinch. Possibly a bit of fatigue. Probably fatigue, and I, I'm guessing that there's a little bit of a conditions factor right now. It's getting, it's hotter than it was when the this round started. It is. We started out in cold, windy conditions with a bit of rain in the air, and over the course of this fantastic final that we've enjoyed, it's got gradually sunnier and warmer. Conditions more difficult for climbing than they were an hour or two ago. So Yoshiyuki, he confirms his fourth place. And Anna Storr is able to make it onto the podium here if she gets this top within two attempts, I believe. She's certainly capable of it. Oh. So here's Anna, she goes feet first, looking solid up to this point. She flashes this, she's moving to provisional third, moving Melissa Lenev out the way. This next hold is one of the best on the climb, I think, so she's almost got it. She needs to get herself set. Don't want to blow it at this stage. Oh, just a little bit of hesitation there can cost you. She still has two more attempts to catch Melissa, I believe, though. tight in the women's competition. Apart from at the top where Megan Mascarenas has won fairly convincingly here. Shauna Cox has done what she needed to do, secured a place on the podium. 
she will be the 2016 overall World Cup champion and we see it there. There were so many possibilities and if this happens and if that happens, but it was always in Shauna's hands. She just needed to finish on the podium and she's taking care of business. She's done what she needed to do. Megan had a very similar performance at this competition last year, just winning very convincingly. I think she had won the competition before she had even climbed the fourth boulder, if I remember right. So Tamara Narasaki, the latest man to attempt men's four. Nobody had much join it so far. He's provisionally third. He can't be caught there, so he will be on the podium. Anna looking to top this attempt. And if she does, she'll move into the third position. I think we'll see a little less hesitation on this next move here, too. And there Got she it. does it. It'll come down to attempts now. She's already smiling, Anna Stork. There she goes. Knew there was a good hold waiting for her. And now, again, a provisional third, but at least a fourth position now. Let's have a look as we wait for the scores to update. I like this from Anna Storch. She started smiling at this point. She's a great climber to watch. She's always fighting, always giving it her all, and always happy about it. <laughs> So Anna Storch, she topped the first and the last bowler today. There, Timo is the first one we've seen grab that hold. This next hold is a more positive version of any of those. So first man we've seen get up to the bonus here even. And this Timo is the move I thought was gonna be a double clutch. Let's see how he does it. As I say, first man, this is uncharted territory today. First man into these holds. Oh. Yeah, just to confirm for you, the scores are updated. That was Anna Stur's second attempt on that boulder. And it moves her up to provisional third. It is provisional though, because if Miho Nanaka flashes it, boulder four, she will move up to third. She has four attempts even, actually, to... Yes, she does. To Alex Puccio can even move up to third. Let's just uh, concentrate one climber at a time. Alex Puccio. I see her there. I think this is something that Alex can do really well on. She's good on steep terrain and using her feet. So that foot, that foot first beta, I think, will be, be pretty easy for her. So Anna Stor, she's just gone into provisional third and she can already be moved out of it as Alex Puccio flashes this boulder. Here we go, attempt number one from Alex. The crowd will be cheering her on. She didn't look herself the first boulder, but she's come back into this final and she could end up on the podium. No, I think that could be it for her. That was a weird attempt. It looked like she almost just dropped off. Maybe her neck was hurting like we thought on the first boulder as well. It didn't look like anything gave way. She just, it was almost as if uh, she was working the boulder and hopped off and wanted to have another go a bit later on. Perhaps didn't realize what she needed to do. Interesting. When you get off to a rough start too, it's hard to see a light and be like, oh, well I can still make the podium. Alex using that home crowd to her advantage. Be great next year when she's back on the tour full time. One of the big characters, the most popular athletes on the tour. Be great to have her back. Again, just slipped off going to place that foot. Going to brush it herself now too. So maybe that maybe that right hand is feeling a little 
greasy right now. Fuji's foot just popped on that on that attempt. He was looking quite strong though, so maybe we'll see another another guy get up to the bonus. Remember, if Kokura Fuji tops this boulder, which I have to say looks unlikely, not because of Kokura Fuji, just because of how hard the other competitors have found it, he will cement his win. After him, we only have Alexi, who would have to get the boulder in three attempts, I believe, yeah. in order to to win. You'd have to say it looks unlikely from how the men have got on with this boulder, but you just never know. Here goes Alex Puccio. Just can't quite stick that cross through. There's definitely something up with that right shoulder. Yeah, you can see her moving it around, trying to loosen it up now, maybe for one more attempt. I have to say I'm pretty surprised. I thought this was something that she would just crush. It seems like her type of style and everything. Yeah, you don't want to make excuses for her. I'm sure she wouldn't make them, but there's definitely some minor injury she's carrying in that shoulder, and, and she hasn't looked herself. Like, if you didn't see the semi-finals, go back and watch them because she looked absolutely superb in them. But she hasn't looked the same climber this afternoon in the final. Yeah, even in the even in the qualifier, she was tied for first after that with uh, Shauna. I've always found it nerve-wracking when the when the beeper is going, <laughs> counting down the last five seconds, and it's your last attempt. So both climbers off the ground, but they finished their attempt. Here goes Alex. Is this cross through moves that she struggled with last time, and again? Well, she may feel slightly disappointed, but it's worth bearing in mind: first World Cup for a year, crush the qualifiers, crush the semis. Sixth place, not a bad return for your first World Cup in 12 months. Yeah, it was this comp last year in ISO before qualifications that she tore both her meniscus and something else in her knee and needed like, uh, surgery to fix both of them. It was so. meniscus, patella, and ACL. Apparently. There we go, yeah. The triple knee injury. I know she was saying she found uh, motivation by uh, seeing a, one of the UFC fighters or, uh, who had a very similar injury and came back like stronger than ever. And so. so here's Miho Nanaka. She can claim third here. She does this in uh, three attempts or less. She already used it one. Here's Alexei Rubsov. He can win today, but he needs this in two attempts or less. And we've seen no guy get even past the bonus yet, so hopefully we can see that this boulder is possible. <laughs> I think that was already his second attempt, though. Lexi, I think, has already used up the amount of attempts he can. But he can secure second if he tops us. Mihon and Naka again. We don't have a tab on her number of attempts, but she can claim third. Her right foot is just not quite getting up to where that the hold is on that volume. So she's not quite getting as solid of a of a bicycle on that on that bonus hold there to come into that left hand. She was toe hooking just under it, actually. Oh. So Lexi, he's used up too many attempts. He's not going to win today. If he can somehow pull a top out, he can secure second. 
currently sitting in third already, so he's already on the podium, though. One minute 30 left of what has been a superb final in front of a big and enthusiastic crowd here in Vale. Second half of it, we've been bathed in sunshine. Not so the first half. You can see the tape on Miho's right arm there. I wonder what type of injury that is for. Quite an unusual place to put tape on the forearm itself. It's an interesting injury. Alexi not giving up here. No, he wants to do a bit of the brushing himself. Not happy with the job that got done. I think a lot of the times the brushing yourself is just kind of a confidence booster. You can see the chalk coming off. <laughs> so I guess it is getting better. <laughs> Found that knee bar. Oh. He's still not giving up Alexi. I think I just caught a glimpse of his knee and it looked like it was getting pretty beat up from that knee bar there. So I'm almost certain that Miho Nanaka has used up too many attempts now. I don't think she will catch Anna Stor. We do know Megan Mascarenas will win today and Shauna Coxie will be crowned 2016 overall World Cup champion. No, Miho won't do it. She'll take fifth. Coming into today, she did have a slim chance as you hear the crowd go. Alexi just got that bonus hold. He's fighting. Oh. I was about to say, Miho Nanak did have a slim chance. She was still just mathematically in the overall competition for the women. So, just to confirm. Megan Mascarena successfully topped all four bowlers in five attempts. Shona Coxie follows her in second. Anastor is third. Melissa Lenev fourth. Miho Nanaka takes fifth ahead of Alex Puccio in sixth. And here, depending on what attempt that was for Alexi, that could move him up to second. But I don't think he had it in less than three attempts. So. I'm fairly certain he didn't. No, he didn't. He stays third. Impressive fight though, getting that on his seventh attempt there, that bonus hold. And there, just to confirm for you, the only man with two tops today was Kokora Fuji. He wins ahead of Tomoa Narasaki. Alexei Rubsov, Yoshiyuki Agata. So, the big news of today, Shauna Coxie is crowned 2016 World Cup champion. Just sum up her year for us, if you can. There was no surprise that she was going to be it after. I think this was the only final that she competed in that she did not win, and she came in second. So <laughs> I think, I don't know when the last time we've seen such a dominant figure in, one of the, in the World Cup circuit. It's worth bearing in mind, as far as the scoring systems go, one of the reasons it's so complicated this year is that we have seven events, and normally we have six, so the climbers, each climber's worst result out of the seven World Cups is removed from their score. So if Shauna wins in Munich, she can finish with 600 points which is a, a clean perfect. sweep. That's a okay. perfect uh, season. That's uh, unheard of? I'm not sure. Uh, possibly unheard of. For the stati statistic geeks out there, you might want to look that up. But yeah, if Shauna's worst score is removed, which was Mumbai when she was ninth, and she wins in Munich, she will end up with a clean six out of six wins. Just thinking about next year already, I don't want to detract from her achievement today, but Megan Mascarenas is doing a full season. Alex Puccio's back. Yanya Garnbrae, she's only 17, but she could be a real force. Do you think this is Shauna's best chance at winning? Was it always her best chance at winning it? I think this year was perfectly set up for her to have this season that she's had, but I think she will be a force to be reckoned with next season as well. She'll have a little bit more competition, I think, but um, she definitely has a good chance of doing it just as well next year, I think. It could be fascinating next year if she can back it up. But as I say, so much more competition for her. And that's no disrespect to the girls this year, but she's been so dominant. And hopefully with, as I say, Megan, Alex and Yanya involved next year, amongst others, amongst the competition this year, it could be 
even tighter. Yeah, it'll definitely be an interesting year. I think it'll be a lot tighter and uh, very fun to watch. <laughs> and as far as the men's competition goes, it seems that we're entering a period of Japanese dominance. Like I said, I think there's something in the water there in Japan. They have just been destroying these competitions, both the rope climbing and the, there hasn't been many rope climbing this year, but at least last year in uh, at the Arco World Championships, the youth, the Japanese team was just, I think most of the finals in every, dif in every uh, aspect, sport, speed, bouldering. And do you have any idea why that might be? I mean, everybody's scratching their heads. These, we knew people like Tomo were talented and Kokuro's he's a strong guy, but the way they've hit this season has just been extraordinary. You know, I think they have just like very simple, well-designed gyms that have, you know, there's no like, there's some gyms that have like set climbs, there's some that just have like full of holds, and then that way you're able to try like all sorts of different, different things. And so they're able to get on all sorts of terrain, train all sorts of movement, and then that's really what's important in these competitions is you have to be good at everything. <laughs> well, the men's competition for the overall title is still wide open, by the way, so when the results have been confirmed and signed off by the judges make sure you check the ranking on the IFSC website it is all to play for going into the final result uh, final event in Munich I'm going to put you on the spot going into that final event in Munich if you had to put your money on one person who are you going for for the men or for the women for the men I don't know I just because of what I was just saying about the Japanese team I would say we're going to see a, a large probability of having another Japanese winner um could be Tomoa, could be Kokoro again. Uh, I think Sean McCall is, is just has a fire lit under him right now too from all those uh, seventh place finishes that you said and now he has two finals. Two finals? Two finals in yep. a row. He's third in Innsbruck, sixth today. And I think that'll just like really motivate him here and there's a there's a large gap here now between Munich uh, and, and Vale here so there is time to train and actually get stronger unlike all these other competitions you've only had like two weeks where you can just kind of maintain and so we will see, I think, a, a large improvement within a lot of the competitors. Yeah, the next Boulder World Cup, the last one of this year, takes place on the 12th and 13th of August. It's in Munich. So the competitors have more than two months off, apart from those who compete in the lead World Cups, as Sean McCall does. But most people have a big break now from IFSC competitions. Bearing that in mind, do you think that will bring the field closer together? I think it could. I think it could also depend on who is like psyched on the training and who is, you know, a little burned out from the season. If you know someone thinks that their last six results are good enough for them for the for the overall title, they might take it a little easy between now and then. Um, there's also the Paris World Championships that we have coming up uh, in September as well, so it'll be kind of training for a dual purpose, I guess. Um, so I, it could be either way. As you see the crowd thinned out here in Vale, which is a shame because we're about to. Of the podium ceremony, we're about to see Sean Coxey crowned 2016 World Cup champion. Vale is a fun little town, though. There are plenty of places to get distracted. And I expect from City in the Sun for a couple of hours, the crowd are in desperate need of a beer. So in a couple of minutes, we will have the podium ceremony for you. What an exciting final round, though. That Came was down to the last boulder in a lot of the cases. It's great when we get that in a final where it's still all to play for. So I believe the only two boulders we didn't see finished were the men's second climb and the men's fourth. Yes. Well, all the women's boulders were topped by one woman, Megan Mascarenas. She was in complete control today. Yeah, I wonder how much the, the home crowd helps there. She's from Colorado Springs, which also has quite, it's quite high in elevation. So I think that puts her at a slight advantage already. She, she's used to training at this type of altitude, unlike a lot of the other competitors. So second win in Vail. Second in a row, she won here last year. Cruise today, four tops in five attempts. Just to recap the results for you, Kokora Fuji has won the men's event ahead of Tomoa Narasaki. Alexei Rubsov will take third. Yoshiyuki Ogata is the fourth place climber. And Ruslan Gomanov is fifth ahead of Sean McCall in sixth. See it up on your screen there. So Kokura Fuji, I believe, will overtake Tomoa Narasaki at the overall standings for the men's competition this year. He took 100 points today to Tomoa's 80. 
and Tomoa coming in today had a nine point lead so Kuro will be 11 points ahead going into Munich all to play for in the women's competition Megan Mascarenas won today ahead of Shauna Coxie who takes the overall title Anna Stor will be delighted with third place her ninth time in Vail ninth time in the final Melissa Linev fourth Miho Anaka was fifth and Alex Puccio who we believe is carrying a minor injury took sixth Yeah, I wonder if that first boulder that really seemed to aggravate uh, Alex's shoulder was, had not been the first boulder if we had seen a different round from her. Well, it's a good question, and she was she looked fantastic in the qualifiers and the semis, and it just didn't quite happen today, and we saw a clutch in the shoulder. It's a shame, really, but she will be back next year. Yeah, and I believe she's going to compete in Paris. I'm not sure about Munich. She, um, I think she's planning on coming to Paris, but not Munich. So I believe she'll come back to that even stronger than ever and hopefully healed up as well. Could be an outside bet for the win. I actually had my money on her to win today, but uh, I wonder if that injury played a part in the end. Yeah, given her performance in both qualifiers and semifinals, I, I had a strong feeling that she was at least going to do uh, top three, but you never know with su such things, <laughs> the it, injury especially. It's inspiring stuff. All climbers deal with injuries, and she's come back from a pretty horrific injury, a, a three-way knee injury, patella, meniscus, and ACL, and a year later competing in World Cup finals. Fantastic to see her back. And also great to see Megan Mascarenas. It'd be nice next year when we get her for every competition. And you know well, do you think she is a, a real contender for this overall title next year? I think definitely. She, as you said, I believe she competed in seven World Cups and been in five of the finals. Yes. And I think every competition she went to this year, she was in the final. And um, she just is a really competitive and consistent, like has a consistent performance, which is what you really need in these competitions. We're just seeing a replay of Megan there. That was women's two, I believe. This is all this talk of next year. It's not to detract from Shauna Coxey's extraordinary achievement. A hard push to think in the history of competition bouldering, competition climbing of all disciplines, a more dominant season than we've seen from Shauna this year. Let's make it in front of the home crowd. And in just a couple of minutes, we will see the podium ceremony. Megan topping yet another boulder. She topped all of them today. Even Shauna Cox in the form of her life. Couldn't live with her. Yeah, and I can't really just stress enough how hard it is to compete in this competition. <laughs> like, uh, the altitude just kills you. I know I've said it a lot, but it is harder than anything else. I think I block it out every year and pretend that I like it, so I come back the next year. <laughs> it's interesting, actually, it's something we discussed uh, in the semifinals with both the co-commentators and we've discussed today. It has to be a big factor. Megan Mascarene, is, she's won the, the last two events in Vail, and as you say, she lives at altitude. Yeah, and I believe even uh, Colorado Springs, where she's from, is even higher than like Boulder, Denver, other places in Colorado. So that really helps. I think it's at like 7,000 feet instead of 8,000, which we're at here. And I, I think that's a huge factor. It and is. she climbs outside a lot, actually, in the Alpine as well. That is a huge factor. You see Shauna Cox do that. And like I was saying, just no amount of power endurance really can prepare you to, to climb here and climb at your top four just because you get so much more pumped so much more quickly. This was Anna Stor on women's four, where she claimed third place. Looked like she might have it taken off her by Niho Nanaka, but in the end she held on. It seems like the root setters did a pretty great job of separating the athletes and having most of their boulders be unbreakable in a <laughs> sense you know like the the beta was kind of forced other than Grustam's beta I believe on the third men's problem with the iron cross move he was the only person to not do that that was a uh, fantastic boulder this was a heartbreak <laughs> this was Alexi Rubsov I believe it was men's boulder two this is one of those cases where I wonder if using the the bolt hole in the middle of that hole that you can see just straight above the, the green tape there, if you, like mono pocketing that might have helped just because <laughs> it's not that positive. These guys have some really strong fingers, so 
I think maybe, but <laughs> it's hard to tell. <laughs> it would be a brave person that suggested that to a legacy now. He didn't look very happy with that, and I can understand. But he was fantastic today, still in the running for the overall title. And he's an entirely self-funded athlete. He doesn't have sponsors or anything. And he was climbing fantastically well today. Not quite well enough to take the win. Kokura Fuji won the men's event. And this woman right here, Shauna Coxie, took the overall win in the women's competition. And I believe we're almost ready for the podium ceremony. And this is one of those funny boulders, the one they're showing right now, because I don't think any of the women read it as this while they were, while they were reading it together during the, the preview time. Shauna got it that time, though. And Megan Mascarena's got all four boulders today. If you're just joining us, Kyra Condi is alongside me. We've been thoroughly entertained by a superb final here today. And the big news is that Shauna Coxie wins the 2016 World Cup Championship. Yeah, well, deservedly. <laughs> Very deservedly. Perhaps the most dominant season in history. We'll just see after Munich. Statistically, it may well be a level of dominance we've never seen before. And I believe we're about ready to cut to the podium ceremony. There's the podium. With a very climber style podium. Yeah, interesting. They look like coolers. <laughs> I think they might be. They do look a bit familiar, actually, from helping myself to uh, bottles of water over the last few days. At least they're getting some use out of them. Good to see recycling in America. been a fantastic event here in Vail. Thoroughly enjoyable. Unfortunately, crowd just thinned out for this podium ceremony. They've all gone off to get a beer. But yeah, it's been a fantastic event. Vail's been a very welcoming town. Super friendly. Extremely well organised. And the action did not let us down. Great couple of days here. I believe most of the climbers are staying on for a little holiday as well. Yeah, I think a lot of people are heading over to Boulder and uh, climbing up in the Rocky Mountain National Park. I know a lot of the Europeans, at least, are rented a house in Estes Park and are going to climb up in Rocky Mountain for at least a couple, like a week, I believe. And hopefully we'll see some second ascents of maybe like hypnotized minds finally or uh, like more sense of jade, that things would be, like that. That would be great if you are a fan of outdoor bouldering as well as IFSC competitions. Make sure you follow the athletes on social media. Hypnotized Mines is, of course, the boulder that is directly off the road, has no hike, and has seen no second ascents. Uh, Daniel Woods is the only one who's ever done it. And maybe some of these guys are strong enough. I'm sure they are. But with only a week, it would be really impressive. Daniel Woods, of course, took part in this World Cup. He's 14th, I believe, in the semi final today. Not quite making the final. And it was nice to see him competing. We don't see it often enough. We did a quick interview with him yesterday. You can see that on the IFSC Facebook page. And we also just spoke to Alex Puccio. I actually heard that uh, Daniel went home early here with a fever, so maybe he wasn't quite feeling his best during the semifinal round. He headed back to Boulder before the finals round even started. He does, of course, just live a couple of hours away from here in Boulder. So for those of you just tuning in or oh, waking up bleary eyed because you tried to stay up in Europe and didn't quite manage it, we're about to have our podium ceremony here. be a very popular winner there. Megan Mascarena is a local to Colorado.
Anna Storr adds a bronze medal in Vail 2016 to her already stuffed full trophy cabinet. Very cool medals here. Yeah, I believe that's the GoPro Mountain Games logo. And then there's the IFSC medal. Yet this event, this IFSC Boulder World Cup, was part of the larger GoPro Mountain Games. There's been all sorts to watch here in Vail, slackliners, kayakers. Some very impressive frisbee going on. All sorts. It's Shauna Coxie, second today. The first final she's competed in and not won, but you know, very close second. Of course, she can't end up with a clean sweep of 600 points. Like I said earlier, I got slightly carried away in the heat at the moment. The most wins she can claim this year is five. She can end up with 580 points, that's my mistake. The excitement of the moment. <laughs> Excitement of the moment got me carried away. Something tells me Shauna won't really care what the number is at the end of the season. Apologies there. If you followed this uh, Boulder World Cup season throughout, you'll know that maths, not my strong point. I do know that Megan Mascarena's top four out of four today. She looked supreme. A well-deserved first place. It'll be great next year when we have a, the entire season. Anthem. That is the result. I think all three of those women will be absolutely delighted with Emma Storr back at the World Cup podium. Shauna Cox, the overall winner this season. Megan Mascarene is winning her home event. Yeah, I don't think anyone can be disappointed after that final as well, too. No. There's three very happy women who I'm sure will be shortly disappearing off into Vale to celebrate. Not before they've spoken to us, though. Make sure you check out our highlights, which will be live tomorrow if not later this evening with interviews with the three of them Alexei Rubtsov third today. 
still in contention for the overall competition. However, he's going to have to beat the two men to his right if he wants to claim the title. But today, third place. So it's a Moa Narasaki takes silver. He is now second in the overall standings by 11 points behind the man. Still waiting to get on the podium. today second World Cup win this year and as if that wasn't enough this result gives him the lead in the overall standings Fuji winner of a great final today. Great scene, sir, throwing the flowers to the crowd. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, look happy, buddy. You're on a World Cup podium. There we go. There they go, yeah. <laughs> few choreography issues sorted now. Thank you, athletes. So congratulations to Kokora Fuji and Megan Mascarenas and Shauna Coxey for claiming the overall title this year. The seventh and final round of the IFSC Boulder World Cup takes place in Munich on the 12th and 13th of August. But in the meantime, the lead season begins in Chamonix on the 11th and 12th of July and the speed season resumes. So plenty of action still to come. We hope you can join us. Thanks for watching.